I made this 16-channel analog switching matrix with today's sponsor, PCBWay. So I have 16 JST 2-pin headers to take analog inputs, 16 more JST 2-pin connectors so I can send analog signals back out of the matrix. And what that allows us to do is take some inputs and steer them as needed to various outputs. For example, here they show using cameras as inputs. Maybe you want to take this first camera and send it just to the first monitor and the same with all the others. Or maybe sometimes you want to take that camera and send it to all four monitors and not do anything with the other three and things like that. So in this situation here, when I want to change the configuration of what analog input is routed to which analog output, these cross point switch ICs are configured with commands over I squared C from this MCP 23017 GPIO expander. That's controlled by an ESP8266 and this receives commands over RS485 serial. So basically I tried to make this modular so I can use it in different applications and what I'm doing right now is using it to switch guitar effect pedals in and out of the signal chain between a guitar and an amplifier. So here's that board in use. It's got an RS-485 connection over to a previous project I made where I've got a foot switch controller with 12 switches and depending which one has been pressed, this board will send out a character over RS-485. Depending how I set up the ESP8266 sketch, let's say I press this button right here and I want that to just connect a guitar straight to an amplifier, bypassing all the effects. When the ESP receives that serial command, if I have the guitar plugged into input zero and I have an amplifier plugged into output zero, the ESP will tell this matrix, connect the node inside the chips that will allow input zero to go straight to output zero, and then the guitar signal goes on out to the amplifier. I could have effect pedals plugged into some of these others, but those are not routed into this signal path. So we'll see this working later. Going back to the 8816 analog switch array, I'm powering mine with plus and minus five volts. So I have 10 volts peak to peak to work with. And this chip can switch signals up to 12 volts peak to peak, but it's limited to your plus and minus supply. The range for analog signals is from the positive to the negative rail. So I have to make sure my analog signals don't exceed plus and minus 5 volts. And although there's exceptions, most guitar effect pedals operate at 9 volts. So the max audio signal level is usually between plus and minus 4.5 volts. So that works well with this circuit. Here's a block diagram of how the chip works. I'm using the ESP8266 to control all of these signals using a GPIO expander. And there's X and Y signals here that I can map connections to. So if I want to connect X3 to Y6, there's a grid of switch contacts in here. So I just simply instruct the chip to make a connection at that node and it will route a signal path between my input and my output. So since these chips only do 8 by 16, in order to get 16 by 16, I've connected two of these chips in sort of parallel on the X pins. Then I get eight Y pins on the first chip, eight more Y pins on the second chip, and overall it behaves like a giant 16 by 16 single matrix. I've explained that in a previous video more visually with a big grid, so you can reference that video if you want to know more about how this connection scheme works. And here's the overall schematic. So the ESP8266 is listening in over RS485 for control signals. When it's time to configure this matrix, it uses I squared C. And because the GPIO of the ESP8266 are running at 3.3 volts and the matrix runs at 5 volts, I'm running the GPIO expander at 5 as well so I can talk to the matrix chips properly. And then I'm using this FET level shifting circuit to translate 3.3 volt 
I squared C over to 5 volt I squared C. So I receive a certain command. I control the matrix chip with this GPIO expander and connect up various X inputs to Y outputs to achieve what I want. Giving plus 5 to this matrix, I'm also using minus 5, so I'm using the 7660 to turn plus 5 into minus 5 on this matrix. Then I can switch analog signals going plus and minus 5 volts. And because I'm using this with guitar effects, I have it set up with the same sort of 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter barrel jack to receive 9 volt power, the same as a guitar effect. So I just plug this into a regular guitar effect power supply. And the wiring on this has the center pin as negative, because that's what guitar effects usually have. So it's not meant for a regular center positive DC power adapter. And I do have a reverse polarity protection diode just in case the wrong polarity is plugged in. I'm dropping 9 volts down to 5 volts with a standard 7805 regulator. So as an example in this setup, I have a guitar effect power supply here with multiple 9 volt outputs. So there's one going to each effect and there's another one going to power this board. So to explain this whole concept of why do we need a switch panel like this to control these effects? Because normally you just plug a guitar into an effect and if you have multiples you just keep plugging the output of one to the input of the other and when you get through them you plug it finally to the amplifier then you just step on whatever effect or effects you want to be active or you step on it again to turn them back off so to explain why we want duplicate switches over here this setup is called a loop switcher or maybe a pedal switcher in some cases so one example of why it's useful to just have all those on off switches on one of these controllers first of all if you have an elaborate setup you could have pedals all over the place so in order to turn them on and off you have to really move around a lot so instead you just keep them all active and then you just bring them in and out with one of these smaller foot switches so you only have to move within a smaller distance to turn them all on or off but a more practical use for this let's say you're doing something and you have no effects on. Suddenly, either between a song or even within a song, you suddenly want to turn on this green one and this yellow one. Well, suddenly you have to find a way to reach up this far with your foot without falling over. And you got to quickly hit this and hit this and not accidentally hit something else. Make it sound like it was seamless. And that can get awkward, especially if you also need it to turn something else on or off at the same time. So you can assign a certain button here to do all of those things at once. So you press number three, suddenly the green pedal comes on, the yellow pedal comes on, you barely had to go anywhere, and there's no chance for mistakes. So I'm using three pedals in my test setup. They're all going into this PCB here, which is another project I made in the past. Each of these boards have four audio jacks. So I took four of them so I can get eight on the top as signal inputs, eight on the bottom as outputs, and I 3D printed a panel so I can just mount those jacks to and it will align it, hold it stable. Now I can plug in three effects and a guitar and have an output going to an amplifier and depending what buttons I press on the foot switch I can change not only which effects are in or out of my signal path but I can even swap the order as we'll see for example it will sound different if you take a distortion effect and then feed it into a delay effect and then go to the amplifier versus if you do that backwards you send a guitar to a delay effect and then that to a distortion and then that to an amplifier. It can sound completely different and maybe you need to be able to switch back and forth between different configurations like that so those can be assigned to the switches. And just to quickly look at the sketch, this is just an evolution from a previous prototype so we've talked about this in a different video. Essentially what we're doing in our main loop is checking if serial commands have been received. So let's say I get number zero. I'll basically go into that matrix and disable any connections that are currently there, define what I want to occur, so which inputs go to which outputs now, and I'll go and configure the matrix for this new signal path. 
and then basically that's it and we keep checking for new serial commands until another foot switch has been pressed. So in this case here, if we receive lowercase b over the serial port, this here is the signal chain that gets implemented. This is our 16x and 16y inputs on the bottom and outputs on the left. And anywhere that an x has been drawn indicates a row and column connection being made inside that big matrix. So the way I've wired things up physically, x0 is going to be the guitar input. Y0 is where I'm going to go out and plug it into an amplifier. Then I have different effects. So each pedal has a signal input, whether it's from a guitar or a previous pedal, and it has an output. Where is this going to go? Into some other pedal or out to an amplifier? So let's say we have our distortion pedal connected on channel 5. The output of the distortion is going to go to the input on channel 5, which is the X5 input. It's going to go into the matrix to be available for switching somewhere else. At the same time, when we want to take some existing audio that's in the matrix and send it out to the distortion, the output is Y5 in this case. So Y5 will be plugged into the input of the distortion. So if there's a distortion pedal sitting right here, it has an output which is going to go here to X5. But that pedal's input is going to come from Y5 to the in. So if you've got some other signals coming in elsewhere and you want to send them to the distortion, you send them to Y5, it goes to the input of distortion. If you want to take that distorted signal and put it somewhere else, that's coming out of the pedal going into X5. So now you just route that wherever you want that to go. So for now, it says here we want to go from X0, which is our main guitar input, and we want to send it to the effect on channel 14. So here, the guitar input goes to Y14, so it's going to go out to one of the effect pedals, and because that pedal's on 14, its output comes back in to X14, because X are all inputs. So next, we want to send the effect on channel 14 over to channel 12. So we come in on X14, and we can see it made a connection inside the matrix to go to the effect on channel 12. So that's a Y output. It goes to the input of another effect. Now, because we're dealing with channel 12, that effect's output goes to X12. Then we say we want to go to channel 5, whatever effect is on there. So the X input 12 is connected to Y5. So that goes to another effect pedal. The output of that pedal goes back to X5, because it's channel 5, and we want to go from channel 5 finally to just the main output, Y0. So here's the effect on 5 coming in on X5, and there's a connection to Y0, and that goes to the amplifier. So when we press that certain switch, we receive serial character B. It takes the guitar signal, runs it into three different effect pedals, and on out to the amplifier. So let's see how this all plays out. I'll show on screen how the signal chain is being altered as I press different switches. Uh -huh. 